is that people think that ozone is this crazy thing, but really simply when you break it down, it is just oxygen. Welcome to the How I Healed It podcast. Here at How I Healed It, we get to hear stories from those who have healed their bodies from the unhealable through alternative methods and the experts who are passionate about whole body health and healing. As I have been on my own healing journey, I have found that the number one thing that has kept me going is learning from others who have gone before me. I believe we can gain nuggets of wisdom from each healing story that we hear. Thanks in advance for subscribing to our podcast so we can continue to bring these amazing stories. I'm your host, Plantfully Megan. Let's dive in. Hey guys, it's Megan and welcome to the How I Healed It podcast. Today, I get the honor of chatting with Alex Hildahl. She is a certified health coach and a self-taught ozone therapy expert. She's passionate about teaching other wellness enthusiasts about ozone therapy. And after years of research and five years of using ozone on her own health journey, Alex now teaches others to use different types of ozone therapy safely from the comfort of their own home. I'm so excited today to talk to you, Alex, about ozone. Ozone has been a really interesting topic to me, and it was kind of hard to find different people because I think it is a little bit of a, I would say, it's not a newer therapy. It's actually been around for almost 100 years, so it's a really interesting therapy, but it's not very commonly talked about. And so I was really excited when I found you and you share a lot on Instagram about the uses of ozone. And I was first introduced to it when my husband and I went to, uh, we went to a healing and detox retreat and they had us doing ozone enemas uh, twice. I think it was like twice a day. Um, And we learned a lot about it there. And then my interest just peaked from that point. There's so many different ways to use ozone. So I would just love for those who are listening who are not familiar with ozone, if we could just lay lay a foundation of what is ozone therapy and then would love to hear your story of how you discovered ozone and what you've seen for the benefits in your own health journey using ozone therapy at home. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me on your podcast, Megan. Um, And so basically to start ozone, So ozone is oxygen and basically oxygen molecule is two oxygen atoms and that's a very stable molecule. And then you have ozone, which is three oxygen atoms, which makes it a little bit more unstable. So basically the process of ozone is and why it's so beneficial in the body is because it donates that extra oxygen atom. So it helps with oxygenation. It helps to increase delivery of oxygen to the cells. Um, and so many other benefits, but that's basically it is that people think that ozone is this crazy thing, but really simply when you break it down, it is just oxygen. Okay. Um, and I came to find ozone, um, after getting strep throat. So like five ish years ago, I was nannying and, you know, kids bring back a bunch of sicknesses from school and daycare and all of that. And I got strep from one of the kids that I nannied and it was around my birthday, which is around the holidays. And I was at home and my sister, I was bedridden and my sister had just gotten an ozone machine. I have a twin sister um, and she's very adventurous with her health um, just like I am. And she had just started using ozone therapy and she was like, Oh my gosh, come, come down into my room. Like I will give you some ozone. I'm like, what the heck is ozone? You know, I see this like tank um, and a machine and like I hear the purring of the machine. And I think she was making ozone water at that point. So there's like a tube in water, it's bubbling. And I'm just like, hmm, this is interesting. But, you know, I trust my sister. I was desperate to feel better because I wanted to hang out with my family when I'm home, enjoy myself on my birthday. Um, and so she basically showed me how to do ear insufflations, which is infusing a a small stream of ozone gas into the ears. And then she showed me how to do a nasal insufflation, which is the same thing. So infusing ozone gas into your nose. And then I also drank ozone water. And this was right before I went to sleep that night. And she was like, you're going to feel better. I'm telling you. And I was like, okay, whatever. Like we'll see in the morning, you know? And I woke up and literally 
almost all of my symptoms were gone. And strep is that like seriously horrible throat, you know, um, fever, just, I was literally in bed miserable before those. And then when I woke up, it was considerably better. I was, I like to say, I was like a new human. And of course at that point I'm like, okay, what is this sorcery? You know? Um, and then from that point, it was literally like the week, a week later, I got my own ozone machine and the, it kind of just fell into my lap. Like I, then I, then COVID happened and I felt like I needed to share this with the world. And that's where, where all this has started. Awesome. That's so awesome. I've seen, um, well, ozone's really interesting because there's so many ways to do it. Um, some of the ways that I've used ozone, I've done ozone enemas. I've done the ear insufflations that you mentioned, the nasal insufflations, um, drink water, drink ozonated water. Actually, my biological dentist, a lot of really good biological dentists use ozone to disinfect. I had to have a tooth pulled and he used that to sanitize and sterilize the wound when it was open. He both He used both liquid, so ozonated water and the gas state with a syringe into the cavity that was open where he had pulled the tooth. So the open wound directly into it. Um, he, my biological dentist is very passionate about ozone, which is really fun. So there's a lot of different ways. Oh, and when I was in Mexico, we went to a therapy center in Mexico and we did blood ozone, which was really, it was different than I thought it was going to be because they drew the blood and then into a syringe that had ozonated gas in it. And then they swirl your blood with the ozonated gas and re-inject it into um, your body. And so it'd be really fun to talk about all the different ways of using ozone, which, and what it's actually doing in those modalities. Um, could you, you want to start with kind of, we could start with the head and work our way down the body. Yeah. So there are so, so many different ways, like you said, and, um, and like how I like to kind of, um, compartmentalize, I guess, is talking about like home ozone treatments, which are considered non-invasive. You can consider them in that way. So basically they're not puncturing the skin. Okay. And then there are invasive treatments that use like IVs or needles, which would puncture the skin and that would be invasive treatments. Um, so like a, what you were talking about, the blood ozone, where it's, I like to call it, it's major autohemotherapy, but um, I like to call it just IV ozone. And that's where your blood is drawn, infused with ozone gas, and then put back in your body. Um, and that is an invasive treatment that you would get at like a clinic or a doctor's office. Um, but in I'm very passionate about home ozone therapy and actually doing the treatments on myself and teaching others how to do that for themselves. Um, and if you wanted to start like at the head, um, so insufflations, and I mentioned this earlier, but ear insufflations and nasal insufflations. So infusing gas into the ears and then the nasal cavity. Um, and then uh, thinking of the face too, you could use ozone oil. So that's oil that's been infused with ozone. Um, and you can use that for blemishes. You can use that for wounds, help wounds heal, heal quicker. Um, so many different ways you can use ozone oil. Um, but then let's see. So moving down the body, keeping on track with insufflation. So then you can do rectal insufflations and vaginal insufflations. And that's where it gets kind of weird for people because it's like interesting, like you're shooting ozone gas up your butt, you know, or <laughs> up your vagina. And yes, when I first heard about it, like, Maybe I was like, oh, that's kind of weird, but I had, I had already experienced the benefits of ozone. Um, so I was like, I'm on board, like I'm ready to try whatever. Um, but those rectal and vaginal insufflation, so infusing ozone gas into the rectum and then to the vagina. I um, mean, those are your four main insufflations. But then there are so many other ways that you can use ozone as well. Like you can do ozone cupping, which is a topical treatment. And you basically put a cup on like a trouble area um, on the skin, say for like skin cancer helping with that or wound healing or ringworm, like infections, that type of thing. You can hold the ozone cup, the gas um, circulates and is really highly concentrated ozone gas that helps to heal whatever it is you're looking to heal. On that same note, limb bagging. Um, so basically it's like a bigger topical treatment. So say I'd put a big bag over my arm and then tie it off and the ozone gas would circulate and help whatever topical issue I was looking to treat there. 
Um, let's see. So then you've talked about like ozone. I think you talked about ozone water enema. So same thing as like a coffee enema or any type of enema. Um, so you would create and make ozone water and then you would do an enema with it. You can make ozone water for drinking. You can make ozone water for cleaning and disinfecting surfaces. Um, I like to swish it around in my mouth for oral health, um, cleaning teeth because your oral microbiome um, and your mouth is the like shows the health of your body or mirrors the health of your full body. Um, and let's see. So there are 11 different ways that I like to talk about for home ozone treatments and I'm trying to think what the other ones are. Um, ozone oil I mentioned, which can be used for like suppositories as well. Um, rectal or vaginally you can do um, or ozone oil capsules. So taking those orally, um, again, a bunch of different ways. I feel like I'll let you go a little bit as yeah. and see where you want to go with that. When it comes to like an ear insufflation, what's the benefit of doing an ear insufflation? What, what's it doing? Why did it help in a situation like you were in when you were first exposed to ozone where it helped with your strep? Maybe we could talk about its effect on virus and bacteria um, and, and then how it's oxygenating the cells. So with ozone therapy, one general like rule of thumb is that you want to get it as close to the area that you're looking to treat as possible. So say like with, um, you have a headache, you wouldn't necessarily, I mean, you could, but you wouldn't necessarily go and do like a vaginal insufflation. Even though vaginal insulation have been found to have systemic full body effects, you would want to try to target the area closest to whatever it is you are looking to treat. So if you have a headache, a great idea would be to do a, um, an ear insufflation or a nasal insufflation because those both target the head, the brain, the sinuses, the ears, the nose, all of that in there, like the throat, the jaw. Um, so that's one thing to think about, but also um, ozone works by killing pathogens. That's one main thing that it's great at is killing pathogens. So viruses, bacteria, um, fungi, parasites, that kind of thing. And I actually wrote this quote down just because I love it. And it's by Frank Schallenberger and he's known as the godfather of ozone. Um, and if you haven't read um, or are just learning about ozone therapy, I highly recommend reading The Ozone Miracle by Frank Schallenberger. That's a really great one, a great place to start just to learn the beginnings of ozone and just, yeah, I highly recommend it. But he states in that book, actually, I think is where I found this, um, a microbe has never been found that is resistant to ozone, which is huge. Um, and pathogens do not have the protective um, antioxidant mechanisms to protect against ozone and oxygen. So like healthy cells do. And that's why it's huge for anything pathogen related. Um, and yeah, so just any, yeah, in the ears, um, yeah, I'll let you go and then we can. Yeah, that's, that I think is really interesting because, um, one of the things that you, I've gotten into as I've researched the different causes of different diseases, and this is well known, even when it comes to like, let's take cancer, for example, there, we know that there's certain viruses and bacterias that can cause cancer. It's why we get our pap smears checking for different sexually transmitted diseases and those types of things, because we know that there are certain viruses and bacteria that can cause cervical cancer. Like that's known. And so just to use that for example, but that is a theory that can be applied to a lot of different diseases when it comes to whether for me, endometriosis, um, just latent dormant viruses and vi a lot of viruses stay in the body. And so Lyme's disease is another one. Um, so, so that's why I think a lot of, I think that's one of the reasons why you see ozone at a lot of these holistic clinics, because when you're talking about what is the underlying cause, and you'll hear that a lot whenever you're going after like root cause healing, what is the under well, underlying cause of whatever it is you're trying to tackle, um, sometimes that is a latent virus or bacteria. And so trying to get at that in a natural way to heal, which is why maybe at a clinic, which that's more the invasive type of ozone, you're going to be seeing blood ozone therapies and different things because they'll be just pathogens and um, 
bacteria and virus that are in the blood. And so to help clean, clean that out and kill those, kill those viruses and bacteria can help give the immune system an upper hand. So it's not just fighting these dormant latent uh, things that are just going on in the immune system. So ozone's really cool that way. And it's been a, around for a really long time. There is this uh, PubMed article that I was reading this morning on it um, that I'll put in the show notes because it was really interesting. Uh, but it's been around for a really long time. It's not something that ha- is just like this new thing. It's been around for over 100 years. And They've experimented on it in different ways, and even whenever they're they're in the article, they they talk about um, using it in wound healing clinics, like serious wound healing clinics, where the I forget what you called the bag that they put where they'll do the bag. Uh huh. Yeah. What what did you call the bag? It's so it's called limb bagging. Oh yeah, lin bagging. So they'll do that and just there's so many different ways to use it, which I think is really, really interesting. Um, so the water that I just very curious about, have you done the I haven't I have not done. I've done ozone gas enemas, which <laughs> I mean it does sound so crazy, but once you're down this like pipeline of alternative medicine and and you see the benefits of it, it's just it's just another thing that you do (laughs) whenever you're taking on your own health, you know? Um, so, so you've done it where you create ozone water and then you are doing an ozone enema kind of like you would do a coffee enema. Exactly. Yep. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different ways you can do an enema and it's just the same. Okay. And can we touch on ozone and parasites? Because I've seen you talk about that on your Instagram a little bit. Definitely. Yeah. So I think parasites are also something that I feel like in the holistic health world and alternative health, like people aren't grossed out or weirded out by it. It's kind of just something that we know affects our health and that we all have parasites. Like it's the owner of Cellcore, I think that says like, if you have a pulse, you have a parasite. And it's just, it's, it's just a part of life. You know, it's not just a third world country thing. Um, and it's nothing to be ashamed of either or scared of. Um, and it's not, I think we can uh, live in harmony with parasites, but it's just when they become, when they overburden our bodies. Um, Cause they're also just living organisms trying to survive, you know? Um, but basically they can harbor mold toxins. Um, and it's important when you're thinking about practicing ozone therapy, and this is just in my opinion, to first target toxins and reduce your toxic burden and open your drainage pathways. And part of that process is, in my opinion, getting rid of parasites as well. And all of that work that you can do, I call it like the pre-ozone work and making your body ozone ready is going to set you up for a more successful ozone therapy practice because a lot of people talk about like, oh, ozone has all these negative side effects and ozone made me feel like crap and ozone this, ozone that. I'm allergic to ozone, which um, is a loaded a loaded thing to say. But I, in my opinion, I think it is just because um, their bodies are overburdened. And if you have, if you do ozone, it's going to kill off all the pathogens, infections, parasites, all this stuff. And if your body doesn't have a mode or a means to get rid of all that, then you are going to be a toxic mess and that is going to cause a Herxheimer reaction. So unfavorable symptoms or like a healing crisis. Um, so just a huge piece of the puzzle in getting your body ozone ready also includes parasite cleansing and just getting your terrain right before you start killing um, and doing a lot of the detoxing that needs a way out. That's really good. Um, I remember whenever I first started into the holistic world of things. And I was, in, you know, getting really into doing detoxes and different things. I remember a friend of mine, she knew, you know, she knew I was b- slowly becoming a health nut and she had this detox tea at home. I think it was just, it was just a boxed bagged detox tea that you would just get from any grocery store. 
And she called me. She was like, hey, I know you really like tea because I'm a tea fiend. She's like, I know you really like tea and you really like detoxing. And I got this detox tea from the grocery store and I'm allergic to it. Every time I drink it, I get this terrible headache and I feel and I feel so sick. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I was like, you should keep it and do it because it's probably your body is really responding positively to it and it's releasing toxins out of your liver and so you know, I didn't know very much about like, how do you open up your pathways? Are there for detoxing? Are there binders? Like whenever you're having those reactions, there's actually things you can do to support your body. But at the time I didn't know about it. I was just excited for her. I was like, oh my gosh, you're having a detox reaction. You should keep the tea. She was like, no, I can't. I can't keep the tea. I'm having a headache. And I, I love that you said that because a lot of times when people find a therapy, or anything. I That actually happened to me um, as well. Way before I was even into this health stuff, I think I had just started using essential oils and I got a bottle of, um, it was it was called multi-greens. And so it was like barley alfalfa and it had some winter green or something in it. But every time I would take it, I just felt awful. I was like, oh, this stuff is terrible. I'm not taking this stuff anymore. Now I look back and it's like so clear to me that it was a detox symptom. And so um, I love that you touched on that because I think it's really easy for people as they're just starting into di a different therapy or maybe a therapy for the first time. Maybe ozone is their first exposure to be, you know, a detox, then they might have a, a re response to it. And it's really important to be mindful of those things. I'm not just saying just like push through and put yourself in a situation that is not good for you, you know, but um but also it's good to know that if you're if you're drinking a tea and i it did make me wonder for my friend is if she was having that big of a response to just a tea that you would get at the grocery store that's a detox tea that has maybe some dandelion in it how toxic her body probably really was or how beautiful her body was in responding that quickly to putting something healthy in in her body so that's really interesting um i don't know if this is going off on a rabbit trail too much but what type of parasite cleanse is have you done or do you or have you worked with people to do like I, i'm sure i can just hear the people who are listening like like oh how, how do you even do a parasite cleanse how do you even prepare your body to to do ozone i love i love the phrase that you said of getting your body ozone ready so what are some of the things that you do um, for a parasite cleanse and what are some of the other things that you recommend in getting your body ozone ready? Yeah. So there's a bunch, but the, the first thing that like when in working with clients and um, like you would want to wait and do parasite cleansing after your drainage pathways are open. And basically when people say drainage pathways, it's just talking about the different ways you release waste and toxins in the body. So you want to be pooping daily. Like the, your pooping is your daily report card. And then like also for women, it's, like your um, menstruating is your monthly report card, but also like you release waste through sweating is a huge one. Like you want to be able to be sweating easily. Like if you're in the sauna, the quicker you can sweat, um, the better. And so those are like ways or the drainage pathways and ways that our bodies release toxins. But you want to make sure that your drainage pathways are open even before parasite cleansing, because parasites, if you, you go and kill parasites, they have waste like ammonia and different things. And if you kill the parasites and then they don't have an exit out of the body, that's going to cause a Herxheimer reaction just the same as ozone would. Um, so in working with clients and what I've done, so you want to make sure your drainage pathways are open first. So that's a lot of foundational work, like with doing saunas and working out and um, eating healthy, reducing your toxic burden, you know, making sure you're having regular poops um, and then and then working into parasite cleansing and then going into the ozone therapy, because I think that's where some people miss they go and they're like, oh, I, I want to do IV ozone. I've never heard about this, but I, I feel in my heart that it's going to work for me. And I do believe in following those like pings, you know, um, that intuition. But then they go and do it and then they're like, oh, my God, it made me feel like crap, you know. But I think that's just because their drainage pathways don't have a way to release that waste. Um, but in terms of like a parasite cleanse, so the the book that i recommend is called the cure for all cancers and believe me i know it's a lofty title but it's by hulda clark um and she is like my she's one of my favorites out there and she's not alive anymore but that book goes way in depth on the link 
of parasites and cancer and just other illnesses. Um, and that's where I learned a lot of my parasite knowledge from was from Hulda Clerk and it's called the cure for all cancers. Um, and basically she just says that you need certain herbs, which green, black, walnut, hull, um, wormwood and cloves are your main three herbs that kill parasites. And you'll see all the other different parasite cleanses that are on the market. They use those three herbs, um, and, and combination with other ones, of course, but that's a great place to start. Also, Cellcore Biosciences has awesome products. You can do parasite cleanses through them. Um, there's one called Parify um, by like Rogers Hood, which I like. Um, so there are different ones, but you want to just make sure you have those three main herbs and a good place to start again would just be Hulda Clark's book. Yeah, that's really great. And some people, some wellness practitioners say do a parasite cleanse every year. Um, I've done, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I necessarily agree or disagree with that, but I think it is important to address and, and you can even get testing if you're just like, I don't want to just go right out the gate and, um, assume that I have parasites. There's so many different, man, at home testing now has gotten so easy to do. There's so many online, different things that different labs and stuff that'll do parasite, uh, parasite testing and, um, I, remember, I think it was, I don't know how many years ago, gosh, I had done some medical missions trips to Africa and we worked with a lot of people in villages really far out in the middle of nowhere. And when I came back, I just was not feeling good. Um, and I just intuitively, cause we, we were bathing in crazy water and in the rivers and all kinds of things. And, and you don't have to go to a foreign country. This is something I learned afterwards. I think my assumption at that point was like, oh, I went to a foreign country. I'd been to multiple different countries. My dad lived overseas for 20 years. We've been all over the place. And so I went to my my MD and I asked for a parasite test and she actually gave me one because I and I think she was liberal with it because I was like, we've been I've been to all these countries and I'm just feeling something off in my gut. And I did a, a parasite test and was te and tested positive for parasites. So I went through and I did a few different um, parasite cleanse, nat natural ones. And like you're saying, a lot of them have those different herbs. As long as they're like fresh, good quality herbs, they can be super effective. And since then, I've tested multiple times and, and the, the parasite that I had was it's, it's tested negative m multiple times. So, but what I've learned because of having paras having parasites from, I think maybe from traveling in that example, I've learned a lot about how they're just parasites everywhere. We're humans and they're everywhere. It is not just delegated to other countries. I think it's really like, I don't know what the word is. Like, you know, whenever you listen to some somebody talk, yeah, yeah, exactly. Whenever you listen to, so like, oh, they have that issue over there. You know, it's really easy. Like, oh, other people don't eat healthy, but I eat healthy. It's like, I think sometimes we put ourselves in these little bubbles where it's just like, my world's okay. Other people's worlds are not. And that's kind of a, a an area where people will do that. And so it's really important to know that just going to a public restroom or going anywhere that there are parasites around and it's, it, it is important to do these cleanses. Um, and yeah, so that's really, did you have a Herxheimer reaction, which is, it's a detox reaction where you're having like negative, like those negative symptoms where you're like, you get a headache or you feel nauseous or did you have any of those detox reactions when you first started into doing detoxes? Not, not hugely. No. And I, I was already doing like saunas and I, I think my drainage pathways were open. I wasn't hugely into like the detoxing and stuff like I am now, um, with ozone, but my husband and I, um, did it together. And he, when we first started parasite cleansing, he experienced really bad depression, um, which emotional issues are a common Herxheimer reaction. And, um, just looking back on that now, like, yeah, it, it, and it, all this stuff does need to be taken seriously, you know, and like, it's really important to have support um, and make sure that you're taking like the right products and, and have guidance and that kind of thing, because 
yeah, I think if somebody like did a parasite cleanse and then got a Herx was feeling that way and didn't have anyone, you know, with them or to talk them through maybe why this is happening and all of that, um, it can get kind of scary, which is the same thing kind of with ozone therapy in the sense that it can cause these sometimes serious Herxheimer reactions or healing responses, detox responses that um, someone needs to just at least be aware that that can happen and what is going on, that it's not like ozone is this toxic substance that is like out to get you, you know, it's like it all, yeah, just knowing all the ins and outs of that before doing any therapy yeah. or parasite yeah. cleanse or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So if, you, you know, when you look into ozone, I think, I don't want to say there's a lot of controversy around it because if you read the, some of the PubMed articles, it's very clear all the benefits and everything that there is. But because it is ozone gas and ozone gas is toxic, can you touch on the dangers of ozone and how to do ozone safely at home? Yeah, so I would say there's kind of controversy and this is something that I'm really passionate about because um yeah, I just, so basically ozone is very cost effective um, and it is cheap to make and it cannot be patented because it's oxygen. And so just in a really quick way to say there can't be money made off of it for the powers that be pharma, this and that. So it was a lot more quote unquote mainstream before. Um, and then the American Medical Association was trying to stop competition and all these things. And then in other countries, I think it's, um, it's used in 20 other countries, like in mainstream things, um, especially like Germany, Italy, France. Um, but in the United States, it has just tanked. And of course there are a bunch of people using it and it's amazing and all these things, but it is not mainstream here. And what you will find when you go onto Google and what the FDA says is that ozone is a, is toxic and has no known medical application, which is just kind of like a shame because when you go and, and type in ozone therapy in Google, um, you are not going to find the best things first. And in my opinion, that is by design, unfortunately. And because when something works, that is not going to make money for people, for corporations, for closing. So um, yeah, you're gonna find that ozone's toxic and this and that. And on that note, ozone is a hormetic therapy. So it's dose dependent, just like anything else. So something that is good for you in low doses, has all these beneficial effects, um, is not going to be good for you at very high doses. It's kind of like a cold plunge. Like you're gonna sit in a cold plunge for three to five minutes, maybe more. But if you were to sit in a cold plunge for 45 minutes, that's going to start affecting you negatively. Or if you were to drink like 50 gallons of water in one sitting, you know, same same thing. Or taking 50 sleeping pills, you know, there's a, it, there's a dose for a reason. You wanna take one sleeping pill at night, just ozone is the same. So it's, you wanna make sure you're dosing correctly and so when you are dosing correctly, that is when it's safe. So it's, it's all about the proper means of treating your body and at the right doses. Um, or else when you go way too much with it, yes, it can cause um, negative effects. And like, you don't necessarily want to, you don't want to breathe ozone. Um, and I have my thoughts on this as well, but you don't want to breathe high concentrations of ozone because your lungs do not have the buffering capacity, the antioxidants. Um, to protect against damage. So really there good. are yeah, a bunch of different ways we can go here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really good. Any way you want to go is interesting. <laughs> um, ozone is also just where it's found in nature is it's found in places like um, after a lightning, after a lightning storm, there's higher concentrations of ozone in the atmosphere. Um, I, when I lived in Texas, it was always so lovely to go outside after uh lightning storm because you could just feel that like magnetic en energy in the air and now I know some of that has to do with the increase of ozone and 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 I think ozone well it does have a negative connotation because you hear a lot about that when it's like oh the ozone layer is thinning and I don't I do you do you have a correlation to that and ozone at all or any thoughts on that in ozone well a lot what other people see too is when you're looking up ozone is that it's smog um, and ozone is not smog. 
there is ozone in smog, but that's basically mother nature's way of cleaning up the man-made mess. Like you can't, you can't trick nature. Um, but basically ozone is easier to measure for the environmental scientists. So they measure the ozone in the air with all the smog. And then basically that became one and the same, that ozone is smog. When really it's all the other things that are affecting you negatively in pollution. Um, so then people That's are really saying, interesting. Well, yeah. So it's like, why would you put smog like up your butt, this and that it's, and it's different. And I'll tell you why, because medical ozone is made with a pure oxygen source. So in my case, I use an oxygen tank, which is around 99% pure oxygen. And again, ozone is oxygen. So you use your oxygen tank, pure oxygen flows through a machine called an ozone machine. And in that machine, it's introduced to electricity, kind of like you were talking about with the lightning. And in that machine, then the ozone flows through, it's introduced to electricity and ozone is made. And that is how medical ozone is made for say insufflations or whatever treatment you wanna do. Um, and medical ozone is different than the, the ozone that you're going to find in smog. Um, and yeah, so it's just completely different. And it's, I think it's to the benefit of um, the people that maybe are kind of boohooing ozone and, and creating this fear because it actually does work. Um, but then people are just so nervous about ozone and it's really, these barriers are super high and wide um, to get around for people to understand like, why the heck are you using ozone in your body in these ways? <laughs> One of the things that you had touched on was ozone oil. That's not something I've ever done. And you said, you know, you can basically ozonate uh, oil of your choice and then put it on your skin. Are there anti-aging benefits to that? I would imagine if it's, you know, it's oxygen, putting it on your skin. What does your practice look like when it comes to ozone oil? So I always say that ozone oil, I don't know if you have ever seen my big fat Greek wedding. It's like an older movie, um, but the grandpa uses or whoever it was uses Windex and he's like, oh, use Windex on this, use Windex on that. And so ozone oil is my Windex. I always have, but a, a non-toxic, healthy version of Windex. Um, so I always have wind or I always have Windex. I always have, I don't use Windex, but I use ozone oil. Um, and in so many different ways and like literally just right here. So I just got a new ozone machine um, and I had this, I was, I just posted um, something on Instagram, but see, these are all different ozone oil products. And like this one is ozonated oil plus CBD, um, which you can spray on the body to help with like muscles or joints. This one is just regular ozone oil that you can use on your skin topically. Um, this one is organic ozone capsules. So it's ozonated olive oil put into capsules that you can then take orally for digestive issues, gut health, parasites, that kind of thing. Um, and then lastly, this one's ozone olive oil suppositories. So you can use them vaginally or rectally. Um, so those are just examples of ways that you can use ozone oil. And there are so many, so many different ways you can even use like an ozone oil suppository on your pet. Um, and, and there's ozone, ozone and veterinary, um, health as well. And like you mentioned earlier, dentistry, but ozone oil is, is great. And it's for someone that's just learning about ozone therapy, Ozone oil would, oil would be a great place to start. It is, it's, it doesn't really cause um, big Herx reactions like say um, a rectal insufflation would when you're just beginning. So like using any of these types of um, ozone oil forms would be a really cool place to start and it's not that expensive either. Oh, that's awesome. And is that something that you, I know with like ozonated water, I know with ozonated water, there is a almost an expiration point where you can use it and then at a certain point, it's just basically back to regular, but now very sanitized water because what, mm -hmm. we've, what we've learned and talked about is that when you ozonate something, it's killing pathogens and bacteria and all, all the viruses and things that are in that element. Mm -hmm. And so you have very sanitized water, but you, the benefits of the oxygen have left it. Does the same thing happen with an oil? So the oil will hold on to the ozone and, and what, like a good frame of reference. So the, I always like to refrigerate my ozone oil and ozone oil in the refrigerator will last up to 10 years and still be very potent. Yeah. And so it's a great thing to have on hand for anything that comes up. Um, and so 
if you don't refrigerate it, then ozone oil will last um, like shelf life of about a year um, and still have the potency. But what you were talking about, so like when you're making ozone water, um, for example, you want to make it and take it because again, like I said, ozone is just oxygen except it's three atoms of oxygen instead of two atoms of oxygen. And basically after around 30 minutes, ozone will revert back into oxygen. So like you were saying, you would want to drink your ozone water as quickly as possible to get as much uptake of ozone as, as you can and get the benefits of ozone. After those, if it just sat on a shelf or something for 30 minutes, then the ozone would be out of the water just back into oxygen, but it would still be a very purified water. Yeah. Um, oh, but in nice. the sense of like ozone water or other treatments, say you wanted to fill up an insufflation bag, um, which is a way to do an insufflation. Um, then you would want to make sure to use that insufflation bag that's filled with ozone gas within 30 minutes, because as that 30 minutes ticks away, the ozone strength is getting less and less. Um, so yeah, it's just around 30 minutes ozone roll for back into oxygen. Really cool. Um, circling back to the insufflations, so ozone, what are the benefits of doing an ozone enema, whether it's water or gas um, enema? What, what have you seen to be some of the benefits of doing that? Or what are some of the reasons in which you would do an ozone enema in, in either form? Yeah, so, um, and when you say enema, are you speaking of like, ozone water or are you speaking of like an insufflation with the gas either either okay so in in like the ozone world so when you say insufflation that's basically when you're infusing gas um and and like i just talked about with an insufflation bag i should have brought one just so you could see it but it's basically like a bag that's about this big that you would fill up with ozone it kind of blows into a little balloon and then you would attach a catheter onto the end and then you would put the catheter wherever you want it. So your vagina, your rectum, wherever. And then you would roll and push the ozone gas into your body. Um, and that's called an insufflation. But then you can also do, which is a lot less mainstream, like it's just something that like <clears throat> as an adventurous kind of home ozone user, I was like, why not try making ozone water and then using it as an enema, you know? And it has similar benefits to a coffee enema or, you know, liver detoxification and helps with parasites. Um, and the same as a regular enema, but I was like, why not just try it? And it also gives me great energy afterwards. And I love doing like say an ozone water enema to clear the bowels and then doing an insufflation after that. Um, and I have seen some crazy parasites come out clients and myself, um, like some wild things, but, but again, yeah. So th that's just the difference between the two. Yeah. So what are some of the reasons why you would do an insufflation, why, why would you do a rectal insufflation? So there are multiple reasons why. One of the main reasons I like to do it, so I have been an athlete my whole life, I've, um, and I love like running and hiking and being active, biking, swimming. Um, and so it increases oxygen in the body and it increases oxygen utilization, so ozone in general. That's basically how well your body is using the oxygen that it's taking in. Um, and so it really is great for cardiovascular, um, endurance, which I love for working out and running and all, all the things and really good for parasites, um, anything to do with that area. So again, like I mentioned earlier, when you're talking about, if you have a certain issue, like say you had, um, like prostate cancer, my dad has prostate cancer and I've been trying to get him to do this, but a great thing to do for prostate cancer would be to target the area closest to the prostate. So rectal insufflation would be really good in that, in that instance. Um, and also like, um, the suppositories would be great too, like putting in a suppository, ozone oil suppository at night before bed to target that area. Um, and then, um, I don't want to blabber on, but like different ozone treatments have been found to have either systemic, like full body effects or local effects. And, and a rectal insufflation has systemic full body effects. So it's going to stimulate your immune system. Um, and vaginal insufflations as well have been found to have um, systemic effects, which is great as women that we can do that. And vaginal insufflations are even a little bit safer than rectal insufflations, just in the sense of how much ozone gas can go in the body and that kind of thing. Um, oh, interesting. But like say like an ear insufflation would have more of a local effect. 
in this area instead of like a full body effect. Yeah, I I was introduced to the rectal insufflations when we went to that detox clinic. And it was the first time that I had, I did the ozone insufflation and I passed a liver fluke, which was, I'd never seen a parasite like that in my stool before. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I just remember, I feel like after that, I just felt so amazing. It was like my head felt so clear for like a while. I was like, this was awesome. I mean, granted, we were doing all kinds of therapies while we were at that detox clinic, but I just specifically remember passing that. And after doing that specific insufflation, I was like, this is amazing. And that was that was what piqued my interest in it, where it was like, oh wow, instantly I I was very clear seeing what happened and how great I felt. And so that's what pe- what piqued my interest in it. And and it is hard to find people who have candid conversations. I think I found one podcast after that that I had listened to and um, a few books that I I read about ozone. But to to find people to want to talk about the topic is actually kind of hard. So that's why I was so excited to find you. I think that's around the time that's probably when I found you on Instagram because I was like, ozone. Anybody talking about ozone out there? <laughs> right, yeah. It's, it's, and that's a, the thing is like, it's, it's hard to find people. And that's where I wanted to start the Instagram account. And like why I've kind of dedicated my life to this is because it, it deserves to be more mainstream. And I don't, it's not going to happen with pharma and all these things like it's going to happen with like grassroots efforts and just like word of mouth and people you know seeing other people's successes and then maybe giving it a try you know and um yeah that's big yeah one one thing that i just thought of uh i had i've had a few friends actually go down uh to hope for cancer and one of the things that uh one of my friends, when she went there, she told me that they have them do is drink ozone water every morning. So what does it look like to drink ozone water and why would you do it? Or why do you think, I I know it would just be your theory, but why do you think that they're having the patients at Hope for Cancer drink ozonated water every morning? Yeah. And just because disease cannot survive in a well oxygenated environment, simple as yeah. that. Um, and I think, so ozone water is a really easy way to increase oxygenation. Um, And basically what you do is you just put a tube or it's called a diffuser stone, um, which helps to increase the absorption of ozone when you put it in the water. But basically then ozone gas is just bubbled through water and then you drink it, which is pretty simple in a sense of thinking or comparing it to doing like a rectal insufflation where I think someone can conceptualize, okay, um, bubbling oxygen, basically it's an activated oxygen through water and then drinking it, right. you know, like that sounds like, okay, I can handle that. Um, and I'm not sure if at Hope for Cancer, they do like other ozone treatments, like if they do rectal insufflations or vaginal insufflations or whatever, but, um, like I mentioned with ozone oil, like that's a good starter introductory application with ozone, like ozone water is a good introductory um, application and, you know, helps with digestive issues, gut issues, parasites, um, like SIBO, anything like that. So, and thinking of like what you're looking to treat, like you're drinking water, maybe with your throat. So anything, um, yeah, anything in that area. Yeah. That's really interesting. I keep thinking of, you know how, I think there was a time, I don't know, maybe this is still a popular thing where celebrities would buy oxygen chambers and they would like lay in them so that they can oxygenate their body because because of the benefits of we know the benefits of oxygen when it comes to youthfulness and um, healing healing and keeping us young and getting us out of oxidative stress so it, it I'm circling back to basically ozonated oil on the skin I feel like that would be like a really good way for like skincare like oxygenating your skin and keeping a youthful appearance do, what do you think about that Definitely. Yeah. And there are so many different types of ozone oil too. Like I have a ozonated jojoba oil and I'll put that on my face and um, I do facial cupping. I don't know if you've heard of that, but really good for lymph flow in your face. Um, And so, yeah, there are different ways, but you could use ozone oil really anywhere. Like any, like if you had um, like ringworm or an infection or a, a wound that's not healing or like my sister, her dog had a big surgery and the, she immediately started putting ozone oil on the stitches 
Um, so anything you're looking to heal quicker, um, like a blemish to like scars or like maybe like a C-section scar or um, any troublesome scars, wounds, that kind of thing will be great. Uh, oh, but I, yeah, I can't speak highly enough of ozone oil. Yeah. So that's an interesting thought is scarring. Have you seen benefits of that when it comes to ozone, ozone and scar tissue? Yeah. So I don't really have any like huge scars, um, but I have heard of people using it um, for scars. I mean, it's the perfect use case for them. But in terms of like, I don't have, I haven't had any big like scarring or anything, but with my sister who used it for her dog with, um, she had stitches and then the, the vet was like, I've never seen anything like, like this before this quick of healing. And she was like, well, I use ozone oil. And the vet kind of looked like a traditional vet looks at you like, okay, you know, like they just they don't know, but you can find a vet um, that does ozone therapy for animals, which is just super cool because you can see it in dentistry, veterinary. It's used for so many different things like um, in the world. Yeah. That's so awesome. I love it. So cool. Um, is there any other things we didn't touch on that you feel like would be beneficial for people today? Yeah, I'm just thinking like, if if this does sound of interest to you, I just say to keep an open mind and there's probably a reason why it's of interest. Mm -hmm. And I think that the most important thing, um, just when it comes to healing and holistic health and alternative health, like is to be open to unlearning and be open to relearning. Um, and just because something has been tagged as toxic or um, unsafe by certain agencies, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the full story. Um, and that it, I think it means that you can find the full story for yourself. And it just takes a little bit of exploration and digging and research, you know, but I would just believe in if, if there's a feeling in your heart that maybe ozone would be helpful for you, like follow that little ping of intuition, you know? Really good. Really, really good. I love that. Um, and where can people find you if they're wanting if they're wanting to pick your brain or are interested in the things that you may offer? What do you offer and where can they find you? Yeah, so you can find me the easiest places on Instagram and it's at Alex Hildall. So it's A-L-I-X-H-I-L-D-A-L. -L -L. And I'm sure Megan will put that in the show notes as well. And then a good place to start too, I have a free ebook. It's a long ebook that basically walks you through the different types of ozone machines. I'm going to walk you a little bit how to get your body ozone ready. Um, so much information there for free. And that's a great place to start as well. And then I'm not currently enrolling, but I do have an online course. So basically it's a self-paced online course that teaches you how to safely and confidently practice home ozone therapy. Um, and if you just follow me on Instagram, um, you can follow along and then I'm going to, uh, talk about when I'm going to be open for enrollment next. Awesome. I love it. That's so great. Well, Alex, it was so great having you on and thanks so much to those who are listening. If you have enjoyed this podcast and would like to hear more healing stories and expert interviews, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Until next time. <laughs>